Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on, hang on. That's a good, that's a good hot cup of coffee, man. Yeah, this morning, once again, and I'm getting down to the last little bit of it. I've got uh, Trader Joe's Joe this morning. Yeah, boy, this makes a really nice cup of coffee. Really, really nice. You got a Trader Joe's in your area. Check it out. And they also have seasonal coffees. I'm probably going to go there this week and maybe get some more of this and maybe check out uh, a seasonal coffee if they have something there. Uh, I don't know if they have something for the summer, but I'm going to look and see what they have. But uh, yeah, I'm getting low on this, but it's good. And I'll also put it in my, my glass mug here so you can kind of see the boldness, the richness of it. Really, uh, just a really a terrific cup of coffee. And it is a bright, sunny morning here this morning. You could probably see right there. See that right there? That's that. That's the sun. <laughs> look how look how bright that is. That is, that's the sun that is just coming in. Uh, the windows here, I had to uh, close the blinds to try to control the, the sunlight. Uh, I have some blinds off to the side here also that I had to turn turn in a little bit. I uh, want to get enough room, I want to get enough light in the room, but wow, I mean, it is a beautiful, bright, sunny morning here, and I hope you're having a beautiful, bright, sunny morning wherever you are, and uh, it's doubly great because I had a great, great shave this morning, so well, hope you also had a great shave this morning, a bright, bright, beautiful, sunny day, and uh, look forward to, to you having a great day. All right. Um, so really, have a great day today. All right, so uh, let's get to some of these questions right away. Oh, by the way, before I do that, did you see the 4,000 subscriber giveaway uh, video? That went that went really, really well, and I appreciate everyone's uh, kind words and sentiments uh, regarding the, uh, the, the workaround uh, uh, that I did. We gave away two razors, uh, as it turns out, so you might want to check that out as well. I'll have a link below if you want to if you want to see that uh, had some technical problems uh, as can be the case when you do something kind of like this on the fly uh, piece of software may not cooperate but um, I was really happy with the result and both winners contacted me so uh, razors will be on the on the way to them so that's great one is from Germany and the other one is uh, the United States. I can't remember what his address was, what state he was. Um, I think uh, Tennessee, I think. I'm not sure. Anyhow, I was really happy with the outcome of it. And really, thanks very much for everyone's kind words regarding how that all uh, how that all happened. I really appreciate it. Okay, so now let's get to some of these uh, questions here. Uh, the first comment comes from Kurt Arn Soli, and I believe he's in Norway. So thank you very much for, for this, Kurt. And he sent me an email and also produced a response video on YouTube to the, um, the shave I had with the uh, injector, the Schick Injector G8, Type G8, which, uh, you know, I'm, I had a terrific, terrific shave with this, although, as I was saying, a completely different approach than a double-edged razor. Anyhow, he wrote, Hello, sir, I made a video response for you on YouTube. Thank you for accepting my friend's request. That was on Facebook, a friend's request. Now I'll have the links below so you can see that. But in that video, and I'll just give you a quick synopsis of it. In that video, he discusses the, the angle of approach with this razor. Now I have seen information all over the internet stating that you use this front head here. You use this flat against the skin like this and then you pull down so that the blade is somewhat parallel. In his video he demonstrates and shows that well you might want to drop this handle a little bit. You might want to have a little bit of an angle. That's what he's saying. You know, flat against the head is a good start but then drop it a little bit. So there is um, some variation there and I think that uh, most wet shavers out there, when they use an injector razor, they're going to find the optimal angle for their beard type and their skin. Uh, I am going to try that with, uh, with this razor, try to drop that angle a little bit and see how that works out. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Now, the other thing that he mentioned, which was 
really surprising. I was really, really happy to hear this. I had had a discussion with Tim Whitcup on Facebook regarding these razors, and I was telling him, I am almost certain that this razor uh, can, can disassemble in some way so it can open up so you can clean it out. And I tried to find the information regarding this, and I was not able to find any information to support uh, my hunch. I think I had seen that somewhere previously on the internet. Some website or some dis thread discussion somewhere talked about this. But because I wasn't able to find any supportive uh, information regarding uh, what I thought thought I remember to be correct, I didn't mention it. I just assumed then that this can't be opened. Well, Kurt very kindly in his video shows that yes, this razor can be opened up and cleaned out. This spring right here, this spring right here, if you use a, a soft pair of pliers, a soft pair of pliers, you can get this spring to swing down. You can see here, right here, this, this this, this circular mount here allows this to swing down. It'll swing down like 90 degrees, and then this razor head will open up. So he shows that on the video, and I am really, really happy to see that. That's absolutely marvelous, because I was under the impression that this can't be cleaned. But it can. It can be open and can be cleaned. And... Uh, uh, just really, really happy with that. So thanks very much, Kurt, for uh, that video response and making those points. I really, really do appreciate it. And if you've got an injector razor or you've got a G-type, check out the video. Now, um, I, don't, I have not attempted yet to open this up yet. I want to get a soft uh, pair of pliers and, and try to do that. I'm going to do a little more research and see if there is any information on how to do that exactly. Uh, he doesn't show how to do that. He just shows that, hey, it's open. Look at that. It opens and you can remove that spring. So uh, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe get get one that uh, is, uh, you know, say four or five dollars on eBay or something like that that's not in too good of a shape and then, you know, work with that one and understand how the mechanism works. I'd hate to do do that to this and actually break it in some way but um yeah it opens up and it can be clean so just wanted to mention that so thanks very much for that kurt i really really do appreciate that okay now that we're talking about injector razors this kind of leads me to something i saw online on amazon actually now amazon has a brand new injector razor for sale an injector razor clone of sorts it's a it's a clone of the Schick injector razor it's about uh, 22 23 dollars something like that I believe it's less than 25 dollars and uh, brand new and it seems to be getting some very nice reviews now here's a review I came across when I was looking at this razor and I'm pointing it out for um, uh, something that I've mentioned in previous Monday morning mailbags. Now, here's the headline. Satisfactory replacement for the razor my dad had since 1962. It's a verified purchase and was reviewed on February 14th, 2019. And uh, the reviewer writes, My dad was not thrilled when his injector razor was confiscated by airport security last fall since he'd had it since 1962 and had traveled with it countless times. His big concern was that he likes his injector blades and didn't know if there were still handles available that could accommodate them. Amazon to the rescue. I found this handle while we were still at the gate and he had a new razor within the week. This isn't his trusty old chick, but he's fully happy with this replacement. Wow, someone is traveling with their vintage chick injector razor from 1962, obviously in their carry-on bag and it gets confiscated. And I don't know, he doesn't mention whether or not they returned it to him later on or if it's gone forever. Uh, that's why I say, and I point this out, that's why I say if you're flying and you only have a carry-on bag or you have your shaving gear in your carry-on bag, get something like this. Get an injector razor, put it in there, and uh, you know, don't take that wonderful, uh, trusty, vintage, or um, 
expensive double-edged razor that you love to use uh, because they could take it away from you. I mean, it sounds like this gentleman had traveled with that 1962 Schick Injector countless times, and I'm assuming in his carry-on bag, and they thought nothing of it. And here comes along someone who says, no, you can't have that on the flight, and takes it away from him. That's, I mean, I'm just curious. Is there a system in place that allows them to have that item returned? That young man or young lady uh, who wrote this, uh, is not going to inherit that razor. 1962, it's gone forever. And I just think that's rather sad, which is why I won't, if I have a carry-on only, I'm going to take one of these, or I'm going to take an inexpensive double-edged razor that, uh, like um, uh, the, the Black Tiger from GlobalShave.club, or a Weishi, something that's 7 to $10, that still does a nice job, gives me a good shave, but isn't a lot of money and doesn't have... Um, I mean, I'm not going to take, I was going to say it doesn't have a great deal of meaning. It has meaning to me, but it doesn't have this great family history behind it, such as my late father's Gillette Super Speed from 1957. I would never take that on a carry-on knowing that it could be confiscated, it would be gone forever. Um, so yeah, so if you are uh, traveling and uh, you're only taking a carry-on, look, if it's a few days, just try to struggle through with a cartridge razor if you're a double-edged razor uh, user, uh, shaver. Uh, or get, like I say, the Black Tiger or a Weishi, uh, something that, uh, a lower-priced uh, razor that uh, you can afford to have confiscated. Um, and there are some razors out there, like the Black Tiger, like the Weishi, like a lot of others that are 5 10 you know, $12 that give great, great shaves. And... Uh, and you won't miss them if they're lost or stolen or get confiscated at the, at, the, at an airport gate. But yeah, get a, um, uh, just to be on a safe side, pack a cartridge razor if you're going to fly, uh, taking a carry-on only. And then you won't lose any of these razors. They won't be confiscated, that sort of thing. So I just wanted to mention to that to you, kind of uh, uh, coincidentally folded into this whole discussion of, uh, of injector razors. And speaking of injector razors, I, I did receive another one. Uh, this is a, a Schick Injector Type I. Uh, it's in pretty darn good shape. Look at that. I mean, it's really, really good shape. I, the, 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 the seller said that they cleaned it up and sanitized it, and I sanitized it again, and it's just in really nice shape. Uh, originally, they wanted about $35. I offered $20, and he accepted. So I thought that was a pretty good purchase for $20. There is a slight, small little, I don't know if you can see it, slight, small, very, very slight, small, little split right there in the handle. I don't think it's anything major. I don't think you can see that because of the lighting here. But it's very, 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 very small. After I made the purchase, I looked back at the photos and I thought, oh, gee whiz, that's, that doesn't look too good. Well, it looked larger in the photos. And when I got it here in person, it's very, very slight. But yeah, the, everything is in very, very good shape. So I'm looking forward to doing a review of this and comparing it to the uh, G8. So that'll be down the road sometime. Right now, I'm just really enjoying uh, shaving with a double-edged razor. Love the double-edged razor. Uh, just absolutely love it. All right. Uh, speaking of shaving with a double-edged razor, uh, NYC Wet Shaving has a channel. And he does some tremendous, tremendous head shaves up there. And uh, he gave me a shout out in his uh, recent video, and I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much, NYC Wet Shaving. I will uh, link his latest video below so you can see him do a head shave. Now, when I was a kid growing up, playing basketball and baseball and sports and that sort of thing, coaches always said, you know, watch the pros. You know, tune in to, uh, you know, the game of the week or whatever, whether it's basketball or baseball. And I really didn't play organized baseball. I played one season of Little League, but... I played in the neighborhood with a lot of the kids, but still part of that whole process is watching uh, the pros play and learning from that. And uh, that's why I say you want to uh, uh, tune in to some of these uh, wet shaving channels where people are doing uh, face shaves and uh, head shaves. My channel, NYC's channel, other people's channels out there where they're doing shaving because you know just observing, just observing, you'll you'll pick up these little tips and tricks. Uh, and uh, little techniques that they're that they're using, and just sort of by osmosis, you'll 
hopefully adopt some of these things or at least have them in the back of your mind for reference. So he has a really nice technique in doing a head shave. I really do admire the way he does a head shave. And he uses uh, usually uses a Rockwell 6S or a Rockwell 6C. Now I've done a head shave with a 6S and I've used the number three plate with that razor. He uses the number six plate, which I think is very admirable. That's pretty amazing. But I recently asked him about that, uh, which one uh, has better glide, the, the Rockwell 6S or the Rockwell 6C? Now the reason why I ask is because the 6S is a stainless steel razor and the 6C is a chrome plated razor. I don't have a, uh, a 6C, so I can't answer this question, but I posed it to him and he very kindly sent me an answer and said, for me, Mark, I find the 6S to work better. Everyone says the 6C razors glide more, but if our lather and prep is on point, it probably makes no difference for a lot of us. Uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with that. Uh, you know, preparation, preparation, preparation. Do the prep, prep, prep. I mean, the pre-shave, uh, get a good lather, a good brush, use a good quality soap or cream, uh, and uh, you'll probably, you will get really, really nice shaves. Uh, so yeah, um, now that I know that the uh, 6S is preferred by him the, over the 6C, well, you know, maybe I'll wait a little while before I get the 6C. But yeah, that's on my wish list as well, getting a 6C and then comparing the two of them on camera myself. But I wanted to thank him for uh, pointing that out. And you might want to check out his channel because he really does do some really terrific, terrific um, head shaves. All right, this next question comes from Just Uncle. L, and he commented uh, in the uh, video I did, the Mighty Menthol Shave recently, and he said, Great shave, Mark. Glad to see a person get excited about shaving with their favorite products. Some people may say you're biased towards Vikings Blade products. I say, why not? They're your favorite razors, and their quality is great for their price range. I can vouch for that myself. Every shaver has a favorite razor or two. Yeah, that's very, very true. The Vikings Blade Chieftain was the razor that brought me back to the traditional wet shave. And I gotta be honest with you, when I uh, came back to the traditional wet shave, I was looking for a razor that was going to work for me because years ago when I had tried it and really wasn't given the correct, in correct instruction on how to do it, um, I abandoned it because I didn't know the process. And uh, so there was a little bit of trepidation. There was a little bit of hesitation in coming back to it, uh, that, which is why I was so surprised and delighted and amazed and uh, uh, just wonderfully happy that the Vikings Blade Chief and worked so well for me and gave me such a smooth shave. It continues to give me a smooth shave. Just uh, last night or the other night, uh, I did a head shave with it. Yeah, it's two days now. I did a head shave with it and uh, no nicks, no cuts, no irritation. It was absolutely wonderful. That razor really has been, um, led to some really, really nice things for me. So yeah, I am biased towards the Vikings Blade uh, uh, products because they work for me so well. And there are a lot of great uh, double-edged razor products out there. And I know that a lot of viewers out there have their own favorites. Some guys love Edwin Jagger. They love Merker. They love Parker. Uh, Mula is fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of great things out there, which is why I continually to say, if you're new to this channel and you're you're trying to dip your toe into the water, into the waters of doing the traditional wet shave, you know what are you waiting for? There is so much great product out there. You'll find a razor, you'll find a blade, a soap, an aftershave, a brush that works. Uh, wonderfully well for your skin and your price point, your budget. And there really is a lot of great stuff out there. Uh, yeah, Vikings Blade is top on my list. I'm biased towards them. I think they make some great, great products. Two viewers are going to find out because they, they're getting the Vikings Blade Emperor Adjustable Razor sent to them. Uh, and I hope that uh, I hope it gives them many, many years of great, great shapes. But yeah, thanks very much for that, uh, Just Uncle L. I really do appreciate that. And really, for me, everything out there is great. I, I love all of these products. I love doing the traditional wet shave. And I want to tell everybody about it because it's really the, uh, the 
really, I think it's the best way to do a morning shave. And I had a morning shave this morning and I looked at the glorious sunshine. I thought, wow, isn't it it's just a great day? It's just going to be a great day. And that's kind of the vibe I have. Even on those cold, snowy days, if you get a great, great morning shave, it just starts your day off in a really good, positive note. So um, thanks very much for that, uh, uh, Just Uncle L. I really do appreciate it. Now, this next question comes from viewer Tim Whitcup. Now, he posted this on Facebook and allowed me to use it in Monday Morning Mailbag. Now, the responses came from a variety of um, uh, Facebook users. I won't mention their names because I never received any permission to use their names, but I'll just give you the gist of what their answers are because I realize that there might be some privacy concerns here. And since they didn't email me or to talk to me directly, um, you know, I'm, I won't mention their names uh, for privacy concerns. Usually when somebody posts something or they uh, email me directly, there's usually a little give and take or an understand. There's an understanding that I'm probably going to use it in a Monday morning mailbag, especially if it's on a public uh, forum like this channel. Or if they email me and they mention a few things, I say, well, I'll say, hey, I'll email them back. Can I use that in a Monday morning mailbag? That would be great. And they usually, then usually they'll say, yeah, sure, go ahead. That'd be great. But in this case, I realize some privacy concerns, so I won't mention any names. But anyhow, Tim wrote, how do you keep track of your blades after use? How do you know how many times you have used that blade, especially when you don't use the same razor each day? Do you have a system? I'll go to use a razor, blade in it, but can't for the life of me remember if I've used that blade once or twice. Mark Zerady, you're welcome to use this on your Monday morning mailbag. Now, there were a lot of great answers there. Uh, some people are just saying they go from memory, and I'm kind of that way too. I go from memory as well. Uh, other people will, uh, one gentleman said that he uses a magic marker dots on the blade or on the paper. Uh, and somebody said, somebody, somebody said that some people, some white shavers use dice. And I was intrigued by this, and I read further, and uh, I happened to find someone who posted an item for sale. I believe it was from Etsy, and he said, I use this nifty blade stand with dice. And uh, here it is on screen. You can take a look at it. And that is really a remarkable a product for uh, wet shavers. I didn't realize anything like that existed. And I wanted to share that with you. That really is amazing. So you see how it works. You just put your blade there and then you put your die uh, or one of the, one of the dice <laughs> in front of it with uh, the proper dot that marks how many times you've used that blade. That is really, really kind of neat. So, uh, I just wanted to share that with you and show you that there is something like that, something like that out there. If you're interested in using it, and thanks very much, Tim, for uh, for allowing me to use that question because that is really, really terrific. Uh, I just thought that that was, I I never knew that anything like that existed, and uh, you know what? I might check it out myself. So I'll have a link also to it so that uh, if you're interested in purchasing this, purchasing it. Uh, it's up on Etsy, and uh, it might be something that you want to have in your shaving den. All right, um, this next one comes from Greg Dubow, D-U-B-O-S. I hope I pronounced that correctly, Greg. Greg Dubos or Dubow? I think it's Dubow. Anyhow, he says, Mark, my favorite aftershave is Avon Wild Country. Besides the fantastic scent, it is not overly strong or overpowering and dissipates in a short while. I prefer those qualities over strong scents that last for hours. I think that's what cologne is for. Do you think you can mention the qualities of aftershaves in a little more depth in your reviews? Uh, thank you and keep your well-rounded reviews coming. Your fan, Greg D. Yeah, Greg, uh, thanks very much. I will uh, definitely uh, address uh, those kinds of uh, qualities and aftershaves and colognes when I do an on-shave review. But now that I've got your question here, I think it's a good opportunity just to mention in general uh, some of the um, some of the things I've noticed. Now, yeah, I am a big fan of the uh, Avon Wild Country Aftershave. Now, a lot of, I, I, have, I have probably maybe uh, five bottles of this, six bottles of this, something like that. 
Three of them were new old stock that I had found in various uh, uh, online uh, stores, like eBay, uh, Etsy, that sort of thing. Um, but then I noticed that Avon, I was monitoring their website, and they brought it back temporarily for sale. So I bought three brand new bottles in the, in the box, uh, and it was not a lot of money. I think it was maybe 15 bucks. I'd have to look again. But anyhow, uh, I bought three of these, and uh, I'm glad I got them because after that one short-lived sale, it disappeared. Now, uh, I, if you're interested in this aftershave, it's kind of got a uh, Club and Pinot kind of vibe to it, uh, kind of in that ballpark, but I like it a lot. It comes in a really nice glass bottle, and uh, I just really like the scent. And, of course, they have a, an aftershave balm that complements this very well, uh, and um, it's... I, I mean, I just like it, and I was happy that it was for sale um, uh, for a short period of time. Hopefully, they'll do it again in the fall. I'll keep monitoring their website, and if I see something, I'll put it on my Twitter feed, or if it coincides with a Monday morning mailbag or a uh, shaving review or something like that, I'll mention it, and I'll have a link. But, um, yeah, I like this a lot, and yes, it has those qualities. It doesn't stay with you a long time. It gives you a nice brace. It gives you, it's got a nice scent. It stays with you. It's not overpowering. Yeah, I like it a lot. And when you use their aftershave balm, uh, it really does uh, complement it. At least for me, you know, I'll put a little bit of the balm upstairs and maybe around the face to finish it off after I use this. Yeah, it's really, really nice. But something like uh, Club Guy uh, or a Future Fiction that I have from Phoenix Shaving, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, these are described as aftershave and cologne. Here, I'll show you here, right here in Future Fiction. If you can see that right there, aftershave and cologne. So this is longer lasting. It absolutely certainly is longer lasting. And uh, sometimes I like that quality as well. But yes, I think that uh, that needs to be discussed in some of the reviews that I do. Uh, so I will make mention of that. Now, Sterling, here's Sterling Mountain Man. I don't find this to be long lasting because it is listed as an aftershave splash and this seems to be the right amount of the uh, scent that's not overpowering at least mountain man is a, it's a nice fresh scent it's not overpowering won't last a, a a long time but last long enough to start your morning off right i like that a lot now one thing i've noticed about the uh, clubman products the pinot and the whiskey woods and the bay rum that sort of thing uh these seem to uh, have those qualities of not being overpowering, great scent, doesn't last, but I find that during the day, for some reason, uh, maybe it's the heat in the room, maybe it's, I don't know what it is, but all of a sudden, maybe about uh, noon, one o'clock, two o'clock, something like that, this will come back. I will get a little hint of it coming back and, uh, and it always seems to happen with the Clubman products for me. I don't know what it is. It just, it stays with me, but it's kind of hidden in the background. And then all of a sudden, I'll just get a little whiff of it, a little hint of it coming back. And that really is, I just think that's an equality. I just love that when it happens. It really is uh, a terrific uh, uh, discovery during the day, I guess you could say. I like that a lot. So yeah, uh, thanks very much for the question, Greg, and I certainly will uh, make mention of whether an aftershave is uh, long-lasting, overpowering, if the scent is, is subtle or strong, uh, those kinds of qualities. I think it's a great question, and that's something I really should mention in future reviews, and I'll be sure to do that. So thanks very much for the question. I really do appreciate it. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Uh, check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetune.com slash blog for my comic with George, other cartoons, other videos like this. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page for cartoons and videos like this, shave of the day photos, lots of fun stuff. Check out phoenixshaving.com or phoenixartisanaccoutrements.com. Both addresses get you to the same great online store where you can get some great, great shaving gear. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop 
slash marksery where you'll find all the products that I review on this channel organized and categorized you can find everything in the snap very easily I'll leave you with this President Theodore Roosevelt said get action seize the moment man was never intended to become an oyster thanks very much for tuning in again I really do appreciate it make it a great week